Hey everybody, this is Way to Fail, back with more Darkest Dungeon, where you may see things look already a little bit different. When I say look, I do actually mean look a little bit different. There is a new update that's come out here. There is new sorting options for the uh, class rosters, including by level, stress, or class. So my crappy organization system won't work quite as well now, but you also notice that, say, like, for instance, Solars looks a little bit different. And in fact, if we look, you may notice the blue paint up here, right over here. I thought for a minute I was having just visual bugs or something but no there is different color palettes that you can use now for the person so I think that's pretty cool just sneak addition in there so we'll see kind of how it works like Andrew for instance now wearing blue or anything like that or green as well but we'll go with the blue I'm just kind of interested in what the game has to provide for all kinds of different looks for people I kind of like the original um, grave robber look there and then we have uh, you guys, there's some pretty good Crusader looks as well. I think we'll go with uh, white for Peroy, anything like that. And then what do we have for the uh, bounty hunters? Pretty good stuff. All kind of, uh, all very earthy tones as it were. And let's just go through the classes. That's a pretty baller purple outfit for Belisar. I think we'll have to go with that even if the black is like, oh look, I'm a occultist. No, we gotta go purple for that. And then the uh, Plague Doctors. I kind of like the White Plague Doctor green. They're all pretty good. I mean, one is the standard. You have your Vestals. Good stuff overall. And then, just so we can see the Jester. Jester, I expect to look pretty crazy. And it's correct. We'll keep green hair there. So, I have some items that I can upgrade with. I could actually probably upgrade my hero capacity. Again, I don't know if that's the best use of some of my uh, resources, but I might as well. Because otherwise, what are we what are we going to do? We can upgrade the guild just a little bit to allow skills to rank up to get to rank three, which is going to be very important. But that uses almost all of our crest. Equipment's also going to be pretty important to upgrade, and it uses almost all of our deeds. So let's go ahead and start with that. Uh, Oh, okay, if we go like this, we'll be one deed short for the furnace. But I think we're doing okay on money right now. So we'll get the we'll get the furnace upgrade for now and see and if we can get anything else oh, next man. time. And then for they the guild, an army. let's go ahead. Okay, I'm actually short on crest as well. So derp, that's okay. Any good items from the nomad wagon? Nope. Mm, decent. And not really. And then a good dark bracer as well. So since we are playing pretty dark, I could go ahead and buy that. In fact, I think I will go ahead and buy that. The only problem is that a lot of my missions, as you may have seen, don't necessarily have me uh, going in super dark places. But we do have two people that are currently recovering from their stress right now. But otherwise, our team should be good to go. And if you can tell from the title here, we're going to be taking on the Swine Prince boss, kind of the last that you can't, I can't, I won't go back, I may make you go back Andrew, because the Swan Prince boss is a, is an interesting fight, it really only takes uh, some work here, but it's very important that I go ahead and try and knock out this boss, if only because some of my team's going to be leveling out here before long. So Swine King is not terrible, you just have to actually be able to do some single target DPS, and you need to be able to uh, not get yourself killed. Let's go ahead and give uh, Diego the Dark Bracer anything else here. Plus 20 scouting percent chance. Now I don't know the status of patch for, and I'm getting some weird lag here all of a sudden. I don't know the patch status for like what happens with all these extra effects like whether they matter or not, but we'll take Diego in to be our main tank here since he got to miss out last time. And then who else do we want to take on this fight? Because Swine Prince is very much just a, a DPS check. So I want to take some high DPS. I think I'll take Solars and Andrew. So that way I can get my bleed on and still do some shit in the back. So let's see here. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's a pretty good lineup. Her damage is down because of a trinket. But that's okay. Plus 20% chance to bleed skills versus minus 5 damage. I don't really know. I remember I said I misread that before when I was looking at it. 
Maybe I should just do uh, this one, 10% more damage. A little bit less dodge, but three isn't huge. And then we go back here. Do you need some health? I think you're okay. You have 26% health, so actually 10% health. Doesn't really help you too much yet, but I think this is a good team. I did get a good complaint in my last video just in terms of why don't you buy items to actually clear some of the things and search a little bit more. And you're right, I could. I have actually done a decent job of not spoiling things for myself in terms of what items I can use to open. But I'll go with this. This is pretty good. I'm not, once again, I'm not spending money on torches. Even though there's some things that if you use a torch, it will open it up because I said this is torchless. So we're going to be doing that. Let's go ahead and embark. Let's see if we can take on the Swine Prince. Well, the good news is I'm pretty sure the Swine Prince is over here. This is a very interesting map. But you can see our party looks quite different than maybe what you've seen previously. Like I said, this is a fairly recent update. My goal is still going to be to camp ahead of time. And it's I haven't really done much to invest into my camping skills just yet. That's kind of on my to-do list coming up. But we can actually take a, a pretty direct route to the Swine Prince if we so choose, depending on what scouts we get. So far, decent RNG. So the Swine Prince is not a terribly awful fight, it's just sometimes getting there can be an issue. Alright, so we have definite room encounters over here, but probably this one's going to be safer. Did I actually buy shovels? Wow, I, f I forgot to buy shovels. Well, I hope we don't have to do too much with digging in the dirt here, so. Items. We get sat content and it's 50 freaking gold. Cool. How did I forget to buy shovels? That is a first. Okay, so first fight here. Let's see how we go. Of course, we have our Vestal going first, so might as well see if we can stun a carry-on eater. There we go. Auspicious start. Once again, we will be camping before this is all said and done, so... Let's go ahead and see if we can get you to bleed and die. Nope. Would have been really nice. So the minus dodge not affecting the dodge chance there. If it bleeds, still one of my favorite skills in the game. And then there's not too much more to, for you to do other than zealously accuse people and get a double kill. Alright. So a little bit of stress. We're off to round two. Might as well party heal since this this team this squad is not gonna these guys aren't gonna be able to do too much it's I don't want to say that I'm out leveling these people but it's very clear what's gonna be happening and the reason I attacked that guy first is that he hadn't attacked you this or maybe he had attacked this turn my party's a little slow today but he's a little bit of a bigger threat to get a big hit in there I probably could have gone for the stun and may have gotten it too only 25% stun resist. Got lucky on the dodge with the vomit. So let's just hacky hack. There we go. And lots of goodies. So it's here. It's an unlocked strong box. Let's open it with you. Okay, so it's not a trap. It's just money. Lots and lots of money. That's good. So another lucky scout. So not too much in either direction. Well, there is a fight down there. And there's traps either way. So we'll go here. This gives us more options for actually probably making it to the boss room. Of course, I'm going to just talk my way through the trap. That was some nice resistance. Alright. More crests. Yeah, I agree. Let's find some things to kill. That'd be really nice. And once again, see, here's the issue, is that we're getting through the dungeon. And by the time I get to the next part, it's going to be uh, daylight more than likely. So I could grab a torch there, but I'm not going to. I guess we camp here, since this isn't the Swine Prince. See, it's like, oh, it's almost dark. But the reason we camp is to try and get a... Uh, as much good stuff as we can. So, we want Battle Trance. Okay, so, we don't really need to worry about healing very much. And we don't want to be surprised, so we'll probably 
get that. Otherwise, this is mostly a uh, healing and stress reduction team, so we don't have to worry too much about some of these things. So, ten accuracy is good. Bandit sense good. In case we need it, might as well use it. And there we go. I hope. No, I've uh, no, I've gotten ambush before with bandit sense, but let's see if we can get the swine prince. And make good on everything. And hopefully don't run into something where we have to dig through. Oh good, some maggots right before. These guys always have a way of just critting up my day. There's one dead. Decent start. Decent start. Uh, 75% chance to clear. That's good. Two down. There we go. You don't even get like a little victory experience or anything for this, but trifling victory. But a victory nonetheless. Yeah. So it's here. Is this Swine Prince or is he the other way? Nope, there he is. He takes up two blocks. And we have our little flag master Wilbur who's marking things for death. So I guess at this point, you're not gonna get stunned. Well, there's a 10% chance of stunning. Let's just go ahead and, because I can hit him, that's interesting that I can actually target either of them. I guess it's because this lets me target all the places here. Let's go ahead and go for the self-heal damage. This is literally just a DPS race. So we want to stack our bleeds as best as possible. And Bulwark of Faith. I don't think it's worth it here. I mean, I could. And once again, it's. I love that because the light is where it is right now, this item's actually kind of backfiring a little bit. So maybe Bulk of Fate's not a terrible idea, but see, one round and that much damage has already been done, and he's bleeding four per round. So obliterate. Now he can crit like crazy. So you gotta watch it. And there's no just like defend skill. So let's see here. More bleed, more bleed. And then let's see here. Divine Grace yourself. So we just gotta hope for no critsies. And we're just gonna try and burn down the prince as much as possible. Eight damage per round is pretty nice. Eighteen damage. Is that death's door? That is death's door. Alright. And he's gonna go for her again. Death's door again because that actually does damage. All right, 47. If we get a good crit here, we can actually end this fight right now. But 37, I'm, I mean, it's either gonna kill me or not. The self heal put me out of death's door, so let's do this. All right, still marked for death. Have survived to a point. It's on you, Solars. Can you get the crit that wins? 10 damage per round, you need to do 12 damage. That's a, I love that arm bone, by the way, in the Swamp Prince. It's just like, you have you have a rotting problem. 15 damage, so you're down. He will die from bleed before there, so. Then we get to phase two of the fight, where if, okay, he's gonna squeal every round and it's gonna do damage and stun quite a bit, so. This is where the stun resistance buff is pretty important. All right, so. Resist. We wanted our vessel to resist, and she did. Because now we can party heal our way. Probably back up to victory. Yeah, by the way, if you kill Wilbur first, bad things happen. Let's just put it like that. I mean, it's it's little buddy. And then he just goes crit, 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 face everybody. So, party heal. And yes, I have seen runs before they did some of this... Uh, they had to nerf some stuff in the background here because before I've seen people like, oh, Wilbur's just up and then he kills everybody. I guess you're just supposed to balance it. But there we go, Vestal. Wow, it's actually a, uh, since my Vestals don't attack that much, it's actually a pretty good common item. That one is not a very good common item, but take all. Not the most exciting run, at least because we didn't get very dark, but still a positive run. More chest contents, hooray. Occultist, there we go. So stress heal, gold as well. Let's go ahead and 
We got our we got our big guns here. I don't think there's really a lot worth exploring over here unless we want to try and get our people killed or stressed out. So let's end the mission and get our experience. A little bit of money. Good amount of change. Lots of crests. So that's that's good. Lots and lots of crest. No deeds. And then we have our first person to level three. Good job, Diego. Sellers is level two. Weld Tactician. Wow, Martel's actually one away, so and Clotter's a very good skill as well. Well hey, good news kiddos. We have our uh, first check boxes for the bosses down. Then we have you'll notice here a little bit of a repeat as we go on. You have different roster goals. All these different goals here, and I'm sure these will change as the game goes on, but just the same here. So far, pretty good. Anything from the Nomad right now. I'll have to think about kind of what I want to do next. Uh, quick Draw Charm is interesting, but have to think about it. Solar Racer, not as good. Um, definitely going to buy the Double Edge Pendant again because minus 10% resist is not too much of a problem. But otherwise, let's see here. Any good heroes? I didn't even look at the leper differences. There we go. One, two, three, four. So those, those are some terrifying lepers right there, but I don't think I have too much to worry about other than I definitely want another um, Hellion, but I don't like the skill set that much. Barbaric Yelp's okay, and Bleed Out's okay. I would have to unlock a skill. So we'll think about some of these things for ne next episode. We have a few people who are stressed out and pr could probably use a little bit of a break. But overall, look at the next missions and kind of where they go. I could try and do some apprentice missions, but I think it's about time. We started moving into the veteran realms just a little bit and taking some of my teams up because level 5 missions are already unlocking, but things are a little bit too easy. And I want to see how much rougher things can get with no torches when we have, uh, whatchamacallit, higher difficulty. And I'll, I'll take the hint and say it's probably going to get a bit tougher. But hey, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. This is Way to Fail with Darkest Dungeon. New updates out. It's pretty cool. See you next time.